Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Sorry for starting a couple minutes late. I want to start by apologizing. Um, you can't see it, but there are a couple lifts right over there that we're going boop, 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 and yeah. you, you wouldn't have hurt us at all. <laughs> so we're here, we're a couple minutes late, but we wanted to show you guys some Star Wars Unlimited gameplay. Yeah. Um, and I say we, I haven't done the introductions yet. <laughs> Jeremy, you would have seen on our last stream, but Jeremy Zwern, one of our senior game designers and designer on the game, and Aaron Halton, one of our game designers and also a designer on the game. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're really, we don't have a holy ton to talk about. Obviously we're here at Gen Con. So Ooh. for those of you that are at Gen Con, come by, say hi, play a demo. <laughs> um, we're super excited, as I've said, to show this game off and to actually finally get it in players' hands. Real cards. Real yeah. cards, yep. <laughs> and as I mentioned on the last stream, we did sell out entirely uh, for the weekend, but we'll talk more about that at the end of the stream for those that are here. Uh, but yeah, so before people get their hands on the game, we're gonna show you with, I say our hands, with their hands. <laughs> so let's just jump right into it. Aaron's gonna shuffle around that side of the table. I'm gonna shuffle over to the side and we're gonna get some gameplay going. All right, and you guys have shuffled up real good, I believe, already. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So one thing that some of our eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed, may not have noticed, is uh, these Luke and Vader look slightly different than the Luke and Vader that you've already seen. So mm. we're actually going to show off on the screen right now our event-exclusive cards. So these are cards that you're going to be able to obtain here at Gen Con if you do one of our demos. Um, they're Luke and Vader, so cards that you've already seen, <laughs> not mechanically unique, but they have that, you know, uh, event exclusive uh, tag on the cards and they are a different frame than what players would normally see for the game. An awesome frame. Yeah, yeah, I, I, do, I do love the frame. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we've got those cards. Um, we're going to be using them tonight, and let's just get started. So as we do get started, Jeremy's going to do just a quick run through. And it's so weird, I keep looking at a camera, but there's no camera pointing at me. <laughs> so Jeremy's going to do a quick rundown of the game for those that, you know, haven't been as involved and watching as many of our streams. So we'll do a quick rundown, and then they'll just get started from the top. Oh uh, yes, this is Star Wars Unlimited. Uh, this is our very fast-paced trading card game. Very excited uh, to be here. Um, overall, um, you lead your forces in the battle with the objective of being de defeat your opponent's base before they de defeat your base. Each of our bases have 30 hit points. The easiest way to do that is by playing units onto the battlefield. Uh, one of the coolest things about this game, we have two different arenas. We have a ground arena and a space arena. Each unit will tell you if it's a space unit or a ground unit. So when you play it, you put it in its appropriate arena. And then those in units can usually only interact with other units in its appropriate arena. And then, I guess another fun thing about this game is resourcing. I guess we can start by, we want to do a random way to do where it goes first. Do you want to try to say, like, I guess this is heads, heads. tails? Yeah, there you go. I'll, I'll go heads. <laughs> tails oh, it you is. Got it. All right, so a, I'm going to, I know Jeremy's doing the intro right now, but I'm going to apologize again because we've got, so We've got a lot background. of things being built here at Gen Con. <laughs> we knew that this stream was going to potentially involve that, but 
uh, bear with us as other people are finishing setting up their booths. So yeah, so at the start of the game, you'll shuffle your deck, draw six cards, cards, and then you can do one mulligan if you like. So if you don't like your hand, you can shuffle it back in the deck, redraw six cards, and then you're stuck with that hand. Um, these decks are, are demo decks, so they're not full decks. They're much a little bit simplified, just to get a taste of the game. Um, yeah, I guess I can. Well, I'm gonna try to take a mulligan, see what All else right. we get. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. Um, so we ch choose a leader to start the game with. That's who kind of we are, who we represent. So. I'm Darth Vader, since I'm evil, a bad boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm Luke Skywalker, because I'm a goody two-shoes, I guess. <laughs> so we start with a leader in play. And one of the coolest things about leaders is they're double-sided. Yeah. So, so the front side is just kind of you leading your forces from behind the scenes. And then at some point in the game, you can actually deploy your leader. They will flip over and be deployed in the ground units as a, a very impressive unit with very big stats. They can come in right away. and have a pretty big impact on the game, so that's yeah. a very exciting moment when you deploy your leader and watch sometimes it's high turn just by having your leader come into play as a unit and fight the battle directly. Um, so yeah, I'll do a quick mulligan. Vader is a beefier unit, but he deploys one turn later, unless yep. you have actions that give you, or cards that give you more resources, and then yeah. he can deploy on the same round. Or... So not one <laughs> turn later, one resource later, yeah. which you, yeah. Which you can cheat. From, you can... from what we've already seen with our super laser tech, you can, accelerate you can definitely that. accelerate that. <laughs> so the start of the game, you have to draw six cards. Once you like your hand, you'll take any two cards in your hand, put a face down in your resource row. Those cards will be used as resources for the rest of the game. So one thing I like about that is it gives cards uh, multi-purpose. You always play a card for what it does, or instead play a face down as a resource. So it gives you a, an option every time when you're playing into cards, which one you want to play your resource. It can be a very fun decision, sometimes a very difficult decision on what's a resource. Let's do... How about those two cards? All right, so I won the, the roll off to decide who goes first. Whoever goes first gets the initiative token. Mm -hmm. uh, a round is fairly simple. Each round is two phases, an action phase and a leader phase. During the action phase, we'll actually take turns simultaneously together, kind of, um, by taking actions back and forth. So I'll take an action, Eric takes an action, I'll take an action back and forth until we both pass. Once both players pass, the action phase will end. We'll move on to the regroup phase. Uh, the regroup phase is very simple. You just ready every card in play. Uh, you'll draw two cards from your deck. And then you may resource any one card in your hand into your resource room. So eventually you'll gain more and more resources as the game goes on, which allows you to play more powerful cards, and then she lets you deploy your leader. Um, so yeah, it's my first action. Uh, it's the most basic action is to play a card. So I will do that by playing a first Legion Soul Trooper. The cost in the upper left there, the, the gold value, the two. Yep. So it just means you have to exhaust two ready resources to play it. And then you also, there's uh, aspects below it. There's a red and villainous aspect. Uh, if your leader and or base has those aspects, you don't have to worry about it. If you're missing one or more aspects, that card will cost two extra for each aspect you're missing. So these decks are built where you don't have to worry about missing aspects. So yeah. I just paid the two, I exhaust my two resources, played my units. Uh, units always enter play exhausted unless they stay otherwise. And then that's my action. I'll pass it to Aaron. So before Aaron's action, I want to point out just a couple things really quick because we had a question in the chat asking if Vader can fight Vader. The answer is yes. <laughs> yes. You can absolutely <laughs> like both have the same leader yep. while playing this game. Um, and then I know you mentioned it, Jeremy, that this is a fast-paced game. This is going to be a much slower version of the game because as our you know viewers have already heard, you're kind of walking through everything that you're doing on your turn. So this is going to be more of a learning experience. So don't take this as the quick experience because it's going to be a little bit slower than a standard game the two of you would play. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, so on my turn, I also will uh, play a unit. Uh, it's a two cost unit. I'll exhaust two ready resources and play an Alliance X-Wing. Uh, since this is a space unit instead of a ground unit, it goes into the space arena, which is on the opposite side of the ground arena. Uh, this cool play mat designates space arena for us, but in a normal game, uh, you know, on an on a open field, you would determine it by 
whoever places the card there first, so. <laughs> yep. All right, that's your action, so not, not to me. Um, for the first turn, there's not too many things to do. You usually play a card. Uh, another action is to take the initiative token, which I will do that right now. That means I'll take the token, I'll have it for next round. Whoever controls the initiative token will go first during each round, which is a very good thing, usually. So that will be my action, which means once I take that, I can no longer take any more actions for the round. I'm out, so then Aaron can do as many actions as he wants. <laughs> yep. With no resources. With, How with, many with, actions <laughs> are you going to take? <laughs> yeah. With both my resources exhausted, my units exhausted, my uh, leader ability costs a resource to use, so I can't do that, so I uh, will just pass. There's always an option to pass as well. Yep. And then once we both pass, I just take the initiative, I'm forced to pass all my future actions. So essentially you'll pass and I'll be forced to pass, which will end the action phase. Yep. So then we go to the reader phase, which means we're ready every card in play. Draw two cards. It's technically we draw you two cards draw first. Draw two first, yep, yep. Let's let's do this right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, we always draw first because it is not an option at the beginning of the game. You must resource the two cards from your opening six card hand. Yes. At this point and every round beyond, you have the option to resource a card or not. So when you ready your cards is you showing that you've chosen to resource or not, right? Yeah, generally, generally units and resources are in play exhausted, unless otherwise stated, except for your two resources to be in the game and play ready. Yep. Ooh, it's a hard, it's a hard choice. Okay. All right. Which so now you? that you've resourced, a fun choice. And everything ready already. Card play. <laughs> yeah. And that ends the reader phase. So then we go to the very next round, which is right back to the action phase. So, so that's for me. It's just two phases each round. It can be fairly quick. Mm -hmm. um, since I have an issue, I'll take the first action of the second action phase of this game. Um, so we did the play card action. There's also attack with a unit action. That's also a very common action. Um, you can choose any ready units you control and declare an attack with it. Um, let's just go ahead and do it just to show it off. I'll declare my first Legion Storm Trooper as an attacker. Uh, you can always attack your opponent's base unless a card tells you otherwise directly. Mm -hmm. And then if, you, if you're doing so, each unit will have a power value with the red value there is two. I'll just deal two damage to Aaron's base directly, put the damage on there. And then, yeah, that's my action since. He has no units on the ground. I mean, I can't. Nobody can attack units in the corresponding arenas. But since he has no units in his ground arena, I can ask. So we'll just attack his base for two. Here's some snazzy damage tokens. Yeah. So you <laughs> know what? Since you mentioned the nice play map, you mentioned the snazzy tokens. Um, everything on the table, the sleeves on the cards, the tokens, and the game mat are all game genic things. We're going to be talking a lot more about game genic stuff in just a couple days on nice. a live stream. Nice. So I'm excited to show you more of what they have to offer, but we did want to tease the game mat and the tokens <laughs> today. Yeah. They they are very, very nice. Yeah. All right, All right. so on my turn, I have a kind of a hybrid of the two different things we've been doing so far, uh, because I'm going to play a fleet lieutenant nice. unit, um, but it has a win played effect, so I pay the three, I put it into play exhausted, and then I resolve it's when played. Uh, you may attack with a unit. If it's a rebel, it gets plus two, plus zero for this attack. You can only attack with a friendly unit, so I must uh, have a unit in play already. I can't, it doesn't let me attack with one of Jeremy's units. That would be <laughs> quite nuts. Uh, so I can attack with my X-Wing, and because it has the rebel trait, it gets plus two, plus zero, so I'm attacking Jeremy's base for four. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Right, that so, feels good. Um, yeah, it does. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> All right, back to me. So I'll take my action. I'll play a card. Yeah, so let's just confirm that was four damage to Jeremy's base because we do have a, a HUD tracking everything. So yeah, making sure that we got all of that tracked properly. Now he's got a Sentinel in my way. So I'll play a Cell by Card, cost three. I have the matching aspects. Uh, yeah, it says Sentinel. It's a keyword. Uh, so opposing ground units in the in the ground arena must attack my cell, cell black guard because he has sentinel. He cannot attack my first or legion, first legion stormtrooper or my base until my cell black guard is defeated. All right. Currently, that's the way it works. Who knows? There might be other cards right, that there's always change cards that. that can break things. <laughs> for... Uh huh. Uh, so I will take the initiative. Yeah, look at that. Do, 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 do. 
All right, so now I will pass. Cool. So All I'm right. gonna get to go first next round. Move on to reaver phase. Draw two. Draw two. Uh, resource one of these. Ooh. We knew this was going to be the case when we scheduled a live stream on Gen Con setup day. There is going to be background noise. I keep getting looks from people around like, nothing we can do now. You're right. You're right. We're oh. doing it. I think that's what I want. All right. I think that's what I want to do. Resources down. Aaron took the initiative. So let's see how this goes. I get to start first. Yeah, you do. I think uh, it's always good to damage the base when you can damage the base. Yeah, I have one too many times. I have well, I'll do two to your base. Not attacked with my units on the field <laughs> and then had them blow up before it was yep. Yeah. Yeah. Es especially against uh, Vader cuz he has the action to deal damage to units and especially against Jeremy cuz he loves to blow up units. <laughs> Well, since you mentioned that, so I guess I'm, I have to do it, so yes. I will blow up the fleet lieutenants. Oh, yeah, deals four damage. Uh, I have three HP remaining, so that's more than enough. So a player's event that deals four damage to units, so events. That's a different card type than units. Uh, when you play events, you do its effects, then discard once the effect is done. This effect is deal four damage to units. And yes, units have a hit point value, the blue value there. Once they have damage on them equal to or greater than their hit point value, they're <laughs> defeated. Wow. Uh, but then it's back to me. I will, let's see, you don't have a lot of resources left. You're probably not gonna play anything else too scary. So I think it's safe to play more units. Nice. Uh, restored Arc 170, I pe think people have already seen. It's uh, similar to the X-Wing, but it's also got Restore 1. It heals my base for 1 after I attack with it. <laughs> it does have two aspects, so... Yeah. That's yep. why. Yep. yep. Doesn't fit in as many you got to be vigilant to play it. <laughs> uh, during my action, I'll just attack your base for 3. Takes me up to 5 All damage. Right. Yep, so 5 damage down on Aaron's base. I will play a second Restored Arc. Yikes. That looking good for me. <laughs> a very impressive space force get going there. Uh, my next action, I'll just attack your base for two with my snow trooper. All right, two more damage into Aaron's base. And then I'll take the initiative again. And I will pass. All right, go to reaver phase, draw two. Good, the, ra the rounds can go pretty fast once you're rolling. <laughs> oh, cool. Rounds go fast, Ooh. but with arcs hanging out on the field just healing constantly. Uh-huh. <laughs> might make the game take a minute longer. <laughs> Slow it down slightly. Let's resource that car. Uh, and start stacking these. Yeah, my problem when I do stack them is I stack them horribly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll stack them in twos, but then I only play odd number cards. Yeah. It just, it doesn't help. No matter how I stack, I do it wrong. <laughs> uh, and you can also choose to keep both of the cards in your hand if you uh, want to stop resourcing at any point. I wouldn't recommend doing that until you're up to your epic action level. So I need one more resource to deploy Luke. Yeah. And then I'll very seriously consider keeping the cards. Yeah. Uh, are we ready? Yep. I, right. I start this round. Um, I will play a snow speeder. Oh, a what now? Uh, uh, oh yeah, people haven't seen. People this. haven't seen the snow speeder. Let's pull the <laughs> snow speeder up and show people. We we thought this card might come up. This was one of the demo deck cards that we have not showed off yet. So yeah, we'll get that snow speeder card pulled up on the screen so that you can see it in a little bit more detail as Aaron reads it out to you. Yeah. So it's got ambush. Uh, which is a keyword that says after you play this unit, it may ready and attack an enemy unit. And then also on attack, exhaust an enemy vehicle ground unit. Uh, Jeremy doesn't have any enemy vehicle ground units, but he does have a juicy cell block guard that I want to ambush into. So I can, uh, it comes in exhausted, then ambush lets me ready it and attack. So I can attack the cell block guard, deal three to the cell block guard and three back to the snow speeder which is going to kill the cell block guard. So this is our first combat unit on units, so yep. 
When that happens, yeah, if units will deal damage equal to power to each other. Since we each have three power, we each deal three damage to each other, which defeats my cell block guard. But then damage is persistent on units. It'll stay there unless you heal with a card ability, a card effect. So my snow speeder is half dead. Also, your snow trooper is now gonna <laughs> hit extra hard against damage units, but say lovey. <laughs> uh, go big or go home. You gotta get rid of those sentinels. Yeah. Not the draw I was hoping to get, but sometimes it happens. Just gotta mate you with what you get. Let's do. I'll pay four for a tie advanced. That has a one plate ability. Give two experience tokens to another friendly Imperial unit. Oh. My Stone Trooper is Imperial. So, experience tokens are cards, they're tokens that are set aside before the game starts. Um, whenever you create a token, you just simply attach it to the targets. So, just attach them like so, and each experience token gets plus one power and plus one hit point. So, now my, my Snow Trooper is a four five. Yikes. That's it? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah. And then you're Okay. <laughs> yeah, the ground is uh, looking lost, but the space I can still win. Um, I think I should attack your tie advance with my X Wing. Uh, so that's going to deal two damage to you and three damage back to me. And that's and both of our respective take HPs. Both down. So it's going to kill both of them. Defeat both. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Blowing then, up in space surely isn't lethal. Through my action, I will attack your snow speeder with my snow trooper. My snow speeder gives a bonus plus two uh, power and overwhelm if it attacks a damaged unit. So this unit has damage on it. So you have six power six and power. overwhelm. So three damage is going to spill over from the overwhelm. Yep. And into the base. So three more damage to Aaron's so base. Takes my that base puts you down to 20. In damage. Yep. 20 health remaining. All right. And then the snow trooper is going to take, take some back. damage back. Yep. I could have just gave you my three. All right. Then my action, I will do two to your base with my arc 170. Okay. And then it has restore one, which heals one damage from my base. So I. Go back down to nine damage. Yep, so that's two more to Jeremy's base, and then Aaron's base gains another one, bringing him back up to 21. Yeah. Uh, each leader has ability on top. So Darth Vader says action. I can spend one resource, one resource and exhaust Darth Vader himself. If I played a villainous card this phase, I deal one damage to the units and one damage to base. Uh, Which so you did play the tie advance. Tie advance is villainous. I can pay one, activate him. I'll do you know, one damage to one of those units and one damage to your base. <laughs> the base is back down to 20 now. All right. Takes <laughs> me back up to 10. Yep. All right. Uh, I will attack your base with the other Arc 170. So two damage to you, and then I heal one again. All right. So Jeremy's base is now back down, or down to 20, and Aaron's is back up to 21 <laughs> with the healing. I'll take the initiative. Yo -yo. You should just, yeah, you should just keep a stack of four tokens there. Yeah. Keep this solid. Uh, and I am all out of resources to do things with, so I will pass. All right. So as they're regrouping, uh, we have had a couple questions in the chat. I'm going to go over those questions really quickly. Cool. And um, yeah, there, there are a couple, couple that uh, we might need to get a little bit of clarification on as well. So um, one of the questions was, are there any space units that affect ground units? I mean, according to the <laughs> rules, ground units interact with ground units and space units interact with space units. But as we have seen from this game is cards can change the rules of the game. Right. So. I'm not going to answer the question, but I am going to say that it's not an impossibility for that to be a thing, right? Sure. Oh, because yeah. cards can change that effect. Sounds like a fun effect to do someday. <laughs> it would be a really fun effect to do someday. and Theoretically. Actually, let me... I mean, Darth Vader, on attack, you may deal two damage to a unit. Yeah. Darth Vader is played in the ground arena. He's not attacking the ground, <laughs> yeah. but he can deal two damage to something in space with his deployed ability. He can so force choke you at any distance. We already yeah. know that it is possible <laughs> for it to happen. There just definitely is design space to explore that if we so choose. 
Um, and then there was a uh, question about resourcing, re mixing resourced cards with cards in your hand. I don't know what that means because there should be no time where the cards that are in your resources come back to your hand and you're looking at them all at the same time, right? They're separate pools. Right. So right. when you're playing a card from your hand as a resource, that's any card from hand, just to clarify yeah. for from a rules perspective, yeah. that's any card that's in your hand, not one of the ones that you just drew. And I want to make it clear that that is intentionally a rule. It doesn't have to be one of the two new cards that goes down as a resource. Right. And then uh, a follow-up question to that was if you resource a card, is there a way to take it out? I'm going to answer the same way I did the last question. <laughs> like, according to the rules, when it's a resource, it's a resource. But that does not mean that there isn't space to affect what is in your resource pool at some point in time. Sounds pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> it, it would be a cool idea. Correct. <laughs> All right. Not cool. in the base game, but it's definitely valid design space, yes. <laughs> right. Um, and then there was another question with Ambush. Aaron, you played the snow speeder that had Ambush. Yes. Ambush does not give you an additional action other than what Ambush specifically says, which right. is ready this card and attack a unit. Right. So technically, it's kind of giving you an additional action, but it's only an attack with that card. If there are no opposing units, you're not able to do any of that effect. You can't ready it Correct. when there's nothing to attack yeah. on the on the field. It yeah. can't go into the base if there's not a unit. It just can't yeah. use the ambush effect. Yep. So I wanted to um, clarify that. And then um, another thing I just wanted to point out for any of the questions we don't get to today, we either aren't answering them because we have them saved for a later point in time, <laughs> uh -huh. or for tomorrow, because we are doing another Star Wars Unlimited live stream tomorrow as well, and we will be able to answer some additional questions at that point. So uh, that's what we got. And oh, we're not going to show off the TIE Advanced any more than what we already, or no. What were the cards we were showing off? No, we're not going to show that off any more than we already <laughs> did. We're keeping that one a little more secret, so, so don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You maybe it? saw something that we it shouldn't have showed out yet, but <laughs> it happened. You're welcome. All right, so I have an issue, so I'll start this action phase by attacking your base for four. Yeah. Gets me up to 13 damage, so I'll leave the three on there. All right, so four more damage to Aaron's base. Yeah. Uh, I guess I better heal my base a little bit, so I'll attack you for two, heal one. Okay, so Aaron With heals restore, one, yeah. and Jeremy takes two. Arc 170's doing work. So are you guys tied up again? Yeah, it's back Jeez. and forth. <laughs> I will play this card, which... Ooh. Brand new one. Okay, this nice. is this is a new card that we intended to show. Well, <laughs> maybe intended to I show today. Draw it. So, yep. So the ATST is coming into play. We're gonna pull that card up as Jeremy walks through the card for you. So six costs. Uh, it's pretty nice stats. Six powers, seven hit points. And it has overwhelm keyword, which means when it attacks a unit, any excess damage beyond the unit's remaining hit points will go onto your opponent's base which we saw earlier with the Snow Trooper. So yeah, ATST, just a nice, solid stats. It's a, a big unit that's sometimes not easy to deal with. We'll see if Aaron has an answer. Yeah, you, you have space yeah. supremacy over there, but uh, you, you need some help on six, the ground. Six <laughs> damage is uh, pretty scary. Yep. Let's see. Um, I can deploy my leader now. That. That's a good... Yeah. Well, so, yeah. he's a 4 7. That's one of the coolest things in this game. Each leader has an epic action. So, an epic action means it's going to be used once per game. Yep. And since I'm at six resources, I can do that. It doesn't cost any resources, I just get to do it. Uh, and he is deployed ready. Yep. Yeah, leaders specifically come in ready because awesome. we want you to be able to use yeah. them. They're super powerful yeah. and they should come in ready. Um. I'm exhausted all out, so I have nothing else to do, so I'll just take the initiative for next round. All right. All right. I, I still got several things to do. Yeah. You, you had such a big play in one go. <laughs> uh, so I can attack your base for two and heal my base for one. All right, so the two R more damage done to Jeremy and one more healed from Aaron. I can attack your first, or your first Legion Snowtrooper with Luke. 
Uh, so that deals four to you, which I think should defeat Definitely you. Lethal. And uh, I take four damage in return. And any tokens that will leave play, just get removed from the game completely. Yeah. And now I don't want... Oh, I did this in the wrong order. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> you may give it uh, on attack. Uh, I can give a another unit a shield token. Ooh, I get to use a cool game genic shield yeah, token. Yeah, I, for, I forgot to tell you, Jeremy, oh, true. Yeah, to use the, the plus one, plus bah, one. Bah, bah. So, obviously, the game will have the cards. Yeah, actual shield token has a card version as well. Yep. So, yeah, the shield token will protect me from the next uh, time this unit would take damage. <laughs> Hopefully keep my ARC 170s alive, because they have been clutched to this whole game. Yes. Um, so Luke did that, and uh, then uh, Jeremy's still passing because he already took the initiative. So I get to go again. I will waylay the ATST. Mm -hmm. oh. Return it to your hand. So oh. I paid three for this event. You got to pay six to play the ATST again. This is really good against big units when yep. it gets, gets to that point of the game. Uh, returns it to your hand. And then you have to pass again, and I will play Yoda. Another unit that can restore and heal damage. <laughs> Keep me in the game. Nice, all right. Yeah, and then I'll pass. Yep. So the Rieger phase, draw two. I think this is the round I stop resourcing, like I said. I'm already up to six. I will just keep all these cards. Oh, all right. Now I have three cards. You don't need no stinking resources. That's, that's better than two two cards in hand. Three cards in hand. Depending on the cards in hand. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a pretty impressive force here. I got nothing right now. <laughs> And since I'm not playing, can I see your deck? <laughs> You're just gonna tell the future? No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna change anything. <laughs> not gonna change anything. <laughs> I really didn't change anything. Just <laughs> reminded Aaron of something because I made a mistake once, and I don't want to make that same mistake again. Okay. No, I, I'm not going to be biased like that. I can't help you beat Jeremy, even though every time I play against Jeremy, I get absolutely obliterated. <laughs> Got no hard feelings at all. I'll <laughs> take every every chance I get to beat five-time world champion Jeremy's room. <laughs> um, I'll start with an Imperial Interceptor. That costs Ooh. four. Uh, when it's played, I can deal three damage to a, a space unit, so I'll shoot down the... Mm, yes, yeah. saved one, the yeah. sacrificed the other. The, the shield would have been nice, but I couldn't shield both of them. All right. Hmm. Well, I think I'll return fire here uh, and attack your interceptor with my ARC-170. Uh, so instead of taking the three damage, I'll lose my shield. You take two and are defeated, and I restore one from my okay. base. So Aaron just healed mm -hmm. all the way back up to 20. Yeah. Uh, since I played a villainous card earlier, I'll activate Darth Vader. I'll do one damage to Luke, one damage to your base. All right, so Ooh. Aaron keeps gaining health, health and then losing health, so he's back down one more. Correct, yep. Jeez. <laughs> Let's see. I think I know what's going to happen next. Uh, <laughs> so it's probably time to play Wing Leader in space, uh, which has a win played ability. Give two experience tokens to another friendly rebel unit. Um, Yoda's not a rebel unit, but Luke Skywalker and the restored Ark are. So I will give two experience tokens to Luke. Getting him up to 6-8, but he also has for 5 for funsies, damage. let's throw those on there as well. <laughs> just because I like them. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I was not hoping to see that, so I guess I gotta do someone else instead now to knock out Luke. Yeah, I'll force choke him. Oh! oh. <laughs> so, five damage to Luke. Uh, that takes him up 10 damage, that will defeat him. Uh, when a leader is defeated, it's a little different than a unit. Uh, I mean, they still lose all the things that were on them, all the upgrades and tokens that were on them. But then instead of going into your discard pile, they go back to the leader zone, exhausted. Uh, so for the rest of the game, I'll still be able to use his leader action, but I can't deploy him yep. ever again. And then yep. that can that go on the epic go action, on the epic action. you're done. Yep. And and then I get to draw a card as a consolation prize. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> hey, you're dead. Here's a card. I'll take it. Sorry, you're defeated. <laughs> Here's a card. Well, I was kind of hoping to keep Luke alive, but you know. I will attack your base for two and restore my base for two. Go down to nine damage. I will take my epic action to deploy Darth Vader. Oh yeah. Well, that's scary. <laughs> he can attack for five and deal two damage to a unit. That can kill a lot of my board. I will go ahead and play an R2-D2. He uh, is a 1-4 for one, which is very efficient, and he's got a win played slash on attack. Look at the top card of your deck. You may put it on the bottom of your deck. Otherwise, leave it on top of your deck. So I'm gonna peek at the top card here. Okay, I'll leave it. I'll leave that. Uh -oh, I'll let Josh it. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, you'll leave that. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, my action, I will declare attack with Darth Vader. I will declare attack on Yoda. Oh no! He is an on attack trigger. I may deal two damage to units. I will definitely do that, so let's hit that. Arc 170, oh, no. two damage. So that will down. defeat the Arc 170 and defeat Yoda, and Yoda will deal two damage back to Darth Vader. <laughs> uh, and Yoda has a win defeated that triggers choose any number of players. They each draw a card. Me too, right? Uh, I could be super nice and let you draw a card, but oh, uh, on, you're buddy. trying to tempt me to the dark side. <laughs> and I'm not cool that is a fair point. <laughs> I'm gonna just Star, choose really? myself. <laughs> huh, I wonder what that card is. Yeah. Thanks, R2-D2, for all the cards. And then, and then it's my turn. Uh, I will take the initiative. All right, so now I will pass. All right. All right. Go to Let's regroup. Face. Draw two. Ooh, I might want to go up to seven resources. Yeah, I will go up to seven resources. <laughs> I'll resource that. All right. All right. Since I'm first, I will go ahead and play a unit into the ground arena while it is undamaged, it has Sentinel. It's the Vigilant Honor Guard, so that's gonna hopefully keep R2-D2 alive. <laughs> I mean, they'll do a good job for now to for keep now. R2 alive. Yeah. Let's... Another cell block guard. Oh, you have a sentinel as well. It's his brother. All right. Hmm. Does he know what happened to his brother? Yes, he wants to. Oh, so he's not happy. <laughs> not Got happy it. At all. all right. <laughs> I will do two to your base. All right. Two more damage to Jeremy's base. Yeah. Gotta attack while you can. Right. Oh, 
Grand Moff Tarkin. Oh. Cool. When played, search the top five cards in my deck for up to two Imperial cards, reveal them, and draw them. Ooh. You've got lots of Imperials. I put the rest on the bottom. Zero the there, though. <laughs> None. <laughs> Not Let's one. See if he can hit two. <laughs> uh, how about all five? <laughs> wow. Jeez. Options, options. <laughs> um, Well, I found my boy body, so that's got to be one of them. Ooh. Let's see an Imperial Intercept here. Here comes right. the combo. Well. Gen Con, background noise. <laughs> R2-D2 could attack, uh, but it, he would just have to attack into a 3-3 three, three Sentinel, which isn't great. <laughs> I don't think I will do that. I think instead I will take uh, Luke's action for the first time this game. Uh, action, pay one, give a shield token to a heroic unit. You played this phase, so. Vigilant Honor Guard is a 4-6 Sentinel and shielded. That feels good. Yeah. That might stymie Darth Vader a little bit. Yeah, I guess I probably should have attacked earlier. Um. Shoot a Death Star Stormtrooper. Cool. Very efficient. Yeah, 3 1. I will play a 2 1B surgical droid. It can heal on attack. Yeah, this time only other units though. Yeah, yeah, not no the cheating. base. Yeah. <laughs> I've had enough restore. Right. This time this time it's healing units. Alright. Um, I'll just take the initiative. Alright. Man, Vader was held at bay. Yeah. Uh and I'll pass. I do, don't want to attack with R2. <laughs> I'll keep both of these cards. Yeah, same here. I do the same thing. Keep I always the push sentinel my sentinel a little just bit. a little farther up, just yeah. as a reminder to me and my opponent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't forget. Can't get past the sentinel. Yeah. Step our Imperial it's Interceptor. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll talk more about those later. Oh, you get to shoot down. Oh, my pop. wing leader, yep. Now you're the space player over there. Hmm. This seems pretty good right about now. I'll... Play Leia, Organa in the ground. Uh, when played, either ready a resource or exhaust a unit. Oh, I could no. get one measly resource back or I could exhaust oh, Darth no. Vader. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> First I had Luke being disobedient, now Leia being disobedient. <laughs> what are my children doing to me? Uh... <laughs> Yeah, Vigilant Iron Guards eventually have to run into it. Tarkin, you served your purpose. I'll attack him to... <laughs> get rid of the shield, Tarkin. To get rid of the shield, yep. Good idea. Ooh, let's see. If I attack first, then you can finish me off with the Stormtrooper. Or I can do any other shenanigans. Don't like that as much. I will play a big old consular security force. It's a three seven. 
cool helmets. <laughs> cool helmets, but I know for a fact they do not like Darth Vader. <laughs> he has done terrible not, things to them. <laughs> not a great track record with him versus Darth Vader, I must admit. <laughs> Talking to him. Deal three damage to my honor guards and defeat the stormtrooper. Uh, I will play repair and heal three damage from my honor guard. <laughs> this would let me heal from a base if I wanted to, but I think it's more important to keep my keep that sentinel larger going. unit alive. Yeah. Yeah. There's your Mahdi. Oh. The combo. Turn all the same way. Oh, sure. <laughs> I will fight the cell block guard with my honor guard. Uh, so I take three damage in response, and now that he's damaged, he no longer has sentinel. They, they have no longer have sentinel. Yeah, there's there's a few of them on there. Yeah. I'll take an issue. Ooh. Well, this seems like That's a good time spicy. to defeat Mahdi. <laughs> I'll attack Mahdi with R2-D2. Yeah. Uh, Probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> okay. I'll ready him anyway. One damage back. Yeah, you do get to ready Darth Vader, <laughs> but thankfully <laughs> you're already passed. Uh, and then I can look at the top card of my deck. Uh, oh, jeez. So, oh, yeah, you put that right I back on right top. Back. Okay, okay. If I win, it's credit to Josh. No, uh, no. Counseling. Um, and then the surgical droid can heal on attack, but I'll just attack your base because I don't want him to die into Vader. So, yeah, I'll attack your base for one and then heal two damage from the Vigilant Honor Guard, and then I'll pass. I'll keep both of those cards this time. Yeah. The Luke deck is a little lower to the ground than the Vader deck. It can live on seven resources. It's a combo. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not gonna insta kill Vader, unfortunately, but. Yeah, what do you got, Jay Z? Two damage to Leia. So that's gonna defeat the honor guards and Leia and you take four damage back and doesn't even defeat Vader. Ouch. Vader is a beast. He is tanky. Now he's got two health left. I think it's time we finally take him down. Leave that the security force. I take five damage back. But I also live. Viper probe droid. Oh. One player, you get to look at your hand. Ooh, you get to see my cool combo. All right. <laughs> and then my turn. Uh, I will attack your base for one with R2-D2 and do his on attack. Look at the top card of my deck. I will put it back. And remember. Let it stay there and remember. Remember what I saw. <laughs> yes. Don't know why you would want to do that. Yeah. 
clever Josh. I'll attack your base for three. Yeah. All right, so three damage to Aaron's base. Up to 12. Keep two of those. All right. And now I will play C3PO. And he has a win play that lets me choose a number, then reveal the top card of my deck if it's the chosen number. Uh, I get to reveal it and draw it. And yeah, if its cost is the chosen number. Right, right. Uh, yeah. So I remember that this uh, cost is three from R2-D2. Look at that. Hey, I get got to draw a new card. It. The combo worked. It's like they're friends. Back out, ATST. Oh, yeah. All right, another beefcake out there. Yeah. That, that's a big boy. <laughs> it's funny because the way that you put them down is how I have them exhausted. And then when I see you turn them, I wonder why. I'll play an Alliance X Wing in space. Take an issue. And then I'll use Luke's action to give a shield to the X-Wing in space. And I'll attack your base for one with the surgical droid and heal two damage from the security force. Put it down to three. Thank you, Josh. Um, and then, let's see, that's, yeah, that's big enough to finish me off. So I think I should go ahead and play Repair as well and heal 3 damage from unit or base and get the Security Force back to full. Lots of healing in this deck. Uh, and shields. They go together. I'll pass. Alright, so while they're doing the regroup, there was another question uh, about the number of distinct cards in each demo deck. So each deck is a little bit different when it comes to unique cards and what is contained within. They're, they're balanced, but um, each deck will have 30 cards plus your leader and your base, and then uh, six tokens between the two decks. So, so for the demo experience, it is intended to be a lighter experience, so it's only 30 card decks. Yeah. Oh, uh, C-3PO, uh, according to the chat, it looks like C-3PO said that we have to reveal that new card. That's weird. Yeah. Dude, see the time. I know. Yeah. Yeah, we showed it off. <laughs> yeah. But. <laughs> yeah, you do have to reveal it. Yep. So they know that you're not cheating about not magic. Exactly. Right <laughs> oh, yeah, that is what it is. But yeah. you knew what it was. I knew what it was. <laughs> I just didn't remember if we had showed it on the stream. I knew it wasn't cheating. So I just rolled with it. But. <laughs> But yes, you do need to reveal the card to your opponent. Jeremy probably just knew from having my whole deck memorized and being like... <laughs> no, I haven't played these before, so this is a lot of surprises. I'll play a Snow Trooper right. Lieutenant. Um, yeah, I'll choose the Imperial Intercept to attack your base for five. Wow. All right, so yeah. that's five more damage into Aaron's base. That's big. You are catching up now. Let's see. That ATST is a big problem. I don't know yeah, the best way to got, use it. You've got a lot of really low attacking units out there. Yeah. Uh, but you're also at 21 damage on your base, so I might be able to make a rush for it. Right? You're, <laughs> you're just short of it currently. Uh, I can play that cool fleet lieutenant. There you go. Um, and attack with a unit. If it's a rebel, give it plus two plus zero for this attack. So got several rebels to choose from. I'm gonna go big. Uh, attack with the consular security force so I can deal five to your base. All right, so five into Jeremy's base.
You're a 17? Yep. <laughs> Jeez. Who's going to rush faster? So I do want to point out, I know we started a little bit late because of all the noise. Um, and we have been talking through a lot of the stuff. But we do need to wrap it up pretty quickly here. So you guys can accelerate play at this point. <laughs> I, I am allowing it. <laughs> Yeah, a normal demo experience will not take this long. <laughs> Definitely once you get the hang of the game, it goes, oh, yeah. goes very fast. Yeah, you have lethal on board. More than lethal, so... Very too slow. So just take an issue next round and finish me off anyway. I'll shoot your base for three. All right. All right. Three damage to Aaron's base. Oh, I can use another ten. Yeah. Do I have another ten? Yeah, there's somewhere. another one in there, there somewhere. All right. I will. Mm. Play Chewbacca. Oh, Josh. oh, Chewbacca. All right. So we have <laughs> another new card to throw up. So, Aaron, tell me a little bit about Chewbacca. Uh, he is my favorite loyal companion. He's very furry. He has the <laughs> underworld and Wookiee traits. He's a three, six for five. Um, he has Sentinel, which you've already seen. Yep. And he has a cool ability that interacts with that. When this unit is attacked, ready him. So he, Great. Gets, he gets mad when you start fights. Uh-huh. You I'll start fights him, and he finishes them, yeah. I'll piss the Wookiee off right now, but <laughs> playing another yeah. Lutan to attack for eights. Ooh. Okay, so with the overwhelm, two more damage two on go to into the base. base. And Chewbacca dies. Chewbacca's defeated. You can't let him die. He's, he's such a, a good loyal companion. He'll be back. He'll I did be not back, let him right? win. And then, let's see, I'll attack your base for two. Okay, so two more damage into Jeremy. Oh. Getting close here. Couple damage away. Should have to be bigger. One damage your base, one damage the droid. All right, so one more to Aaron. All right, I'll attack your base for one with R2-D2, and I guess I'll look at the top card of my deck, and I'll keep it on there. I wish we would join these guys a lot sooner. Oh, oh yeah. no! They're so good early. <laughs> Knock your lace. I'll attack your base for one more. All right, 3PO is the one to finish it off. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good game. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good game. Uh, let's scoot around to the other side again really quick, Aaron. Yeah. And then we will close this stream out quickly because our good friends at AMG Whoa. are going to be streaming momentarily and we don't want to interfere with what they're doing. <laughs> so um, I think, are we back to the, the main camera? Okay, great. <laughs> our setup is a little bit different here, so uh, getting used to it. Um, but yes, so thank you for hanging out and joining us. As I stated before, this was a much longer game than you would normally see as we were kind of using it to teach, showing off new stuff, answering questions and whatnot. Uh, but one thing that I do want to point out while we're here at Gen Con is, I've mentioned before, we are completely sold out, but we have opened up additional seating every hour that we are running events, which is every hour of the day. <laughs> so every hour on the hour, we are gonna have additional seating for people that just wanna walk up and play. We wanted to make sure that anybody who wanted to try the game would have a better opportunity to be able to do that. So we opened that up for everyone. Um, uh, we didn't have any questions hanging out at the end, so I think that we'll just call it there. So cool. thank you both for joining. Yeah. I appreciate you being here and teaching everybody the game. <laughs> and thank you all for being here. And for those at Gen Con, we look forward to seeing you in person this weekend. For everybody else, we'll see you next time. <laughs>